Hello and welcome to the channel. How are you? I'm good. Zani Pro, I'm so glad meeting you here again. How are you doing? I'm good, I'm good, my friend. So how has the music been treating you? Well, we've been in it. It's been a part of our culture anyway. It's something we cannot live by. You know, we sleep, we wake up with music, tweaking and listening and reviewing and producing. You know, it, it, it's becoming a norm to us. Or let, let me say it's the norm for us producers. Okay, that's great. That's great. Yeah. Can you tell the viewers a little bit about yourself? Okay. My name is Young Rock. I'm a music producer and mixer and mastering engineer with over 20 years of experience in the industry and entertainment industry. And also by education, I'm a microbiologist. But you know, that is out of the way for now. We are producers. <laughs> so Young Rock is your friend and someone you can always you know, run to when you have issues that are 100% audio related and I have to do the best of my with the best of my knowledge you know educate correct and lead when it comes to audio engineering that's great so mm. you tell us how you get into music production and yeah actually music uh, I wouldn't say music runs in my family, but I would actually say uh, they introduced me into it. Like uh, I could remember at the age of three, four, five, and six, all my birthdays were celebrated with either a toy keyboard, piano, or some music jukebox, or something so related to music every now and then. And, you know, when you raise a child in such a manner and when he grows up, he maintains that manner, you know. So my parents actually didn't know they were actually leading me into becoming a music producer or a music lover or a songwriter and performer. They presented me with gifts of musical instruments, musical equipment every now and then I celebrated a birthday each year. You know, I still remember I had this jukebox that when you wind it, you know, and place it somewhere, it will be playing some marimba notes while a lady will be dancing left, right, you know? I don't know if you know those stuffs. Yes. So uh, that was it. I continued with that. At my early secondary 10, 12, 11 years of age, I joined the church choir. You know, as a young man, I joined the church choir. I started from there. Then I improved myself in playing keyboards and notes and the rest of them. Excuse me. Oh, got a call. Just so that was what happened and music became a part of me and by the time i grew up a little older to understand what music is all about i was introduced into the music industry properly you know and that was just the beginning of the whole stuff i got interested in moving to studios to record some songs. And then one very day, something really challenged me. I went to a recording studio to work and the producer saw that I was an up and coming artist. Like he felt I, that was my level of knowledge in music. So I asked him to produce a song for me. I sang for him. He listen to the song and then asked me to go out and buy him some drinks and smoke. You know, as a young man, I went out 
you know, out of enthusiasm, I had to run out to get those stuffs for the producer. Before I could return, he already made the beats. And I was like, how come? He already made the beats. And then asked me to go into the recording booth. I can't forget that. When he asked me to go to the recording booth, I went to the recording booth. He recorded me one straight take. When I mean one straight take. And that was it. Just one straight take. And he asked me out, then loaded auto-tune. And my voice changed and he wrapped it up under one hour, gave me the entire song and asked me to go. You know, I wasn't satisfied with the whole thing. I was totally disappointed. I went home, I sat down, I was thinking around it. And what happened? I told myself, I'm not going to let any producer produce my song again. And that was my biggest motivation. I took it upon myself. After the university days, I had to go into music production. Like I went to the school to study again. And then I came out with my diploma and certificates as a music producer and sound engineer with mixing and mastering all added to it. And that was just the beginning of it. And ever since then, I haven't stopped. Ever since then, I've been on the moving train, like getting better and better and better over the years. And today I can tell you, people from UK, people from all over the world, Australia and US are already sending me jobs to mix. And I think I met you, I saw you at Engineers too, Engineers too. So <laughs> we are there together. <laughs> yeah you know like ai and you know into music production yeah the advent of ai into music production is good i wouldn't lie to you actually my macbook i've scripted my macbook to work with ai assistant to my logic pro i made the script some last week but i still want to say something here ai will actually ruin creativity on a long run you know by the time i keep telling some of my friends who are you know running into ai full time you know in five years time in 10 years time all of us will be like very dumb wow. you know we are going to be very dumb we are going to what i mean dumb we are going to be ai dependent and that is that is not just too good for me for me, it's a red flag. It's a no, no. You know, AI is doing the most now. No matter how you tell it, no matter how you co control it, no matter how you send those uh, scripts or signals or, you know, word, AI will design it and even do it better than what you already fed it with, you know. Now, just imagine that you run into a situation where there is no internet somewhere. There is no, you know, network reachability and you're trying to produce music just because you're fully now dependent on AI. What will happen? Get it. I got it, definitely. I don't know if you understand the picture I'm trying to paint here. Absolutely. It's just like, it's just like when you are producing regularly and five years later, maybe you traveled by proxy you got a new job somewhere and you worked for five years or six years and someday they brought back logic for you to start making a beat. You'll be lost, totally. Absolutely. Absolutely. So that is the fear of AI. AI is doing the most and is doing it better than even the smart mind. And now when everyone is trying to be the best, psychologically and physically you are trying to be the best you're trying to outsmart every other producer by depending on the ai what happens when you go into competitions with other producers let's say you have to make a beat in five minutes you have to make a beat in 10 minutes everybody should watch it would you also depend on the ais no i guess not what do you think about adobe atmos adobe is Dolby, sorry if I if I call it Adobe. Dolby Atmos is too professional and it's just too beautiful. 
you know, it brings you, it brings reality into your listening. It brings reality into your listening. You know, back in the days or back in the years, the first time before they even called it Dolby Atmos or whatever, they call it Dolby only with the Dolby sign, the DB sign. And mostly where you found those things we are in cinematics, cinema movies, when you go to the cinemas and you're watching, everything is just like so real. Now they are bringing it into the real music and it's very, very interesting to have it around. Ooh, ooh. Mm. What's your take on the current music trend in general? Yeah, music trend in general, people are no longer doing good music these days and it's a very sad situation. You know, I've, I always make references. Yesterday, I was playing some old song, old songs, 20, 20, 2000s, 1999 music with some other artist, And he was asking me, he asked me a question, like, where are these writers? What, how do they think before they write? Like, when you're listening to most of those songs, you... Figure out that they write what touches you when you're listening. Yes, but in today's music industry, everybody wants to, you know, either you're mumbling, either you're following the, the log drumming patterns, either you're following the, it, okay, it, the advent of 808 is almost going off. Now it's log drums and log drums and log drums. When you go to the clubs, if you spend one hour in the club, you're only hearing log drums here and there. I mean, I don't think it's a good, a cool thing, but it's nice. They are keeping the industry, you know, alive. Yeah. That's cool. Well, like you said, you yeah. know, things come and go. So we will see. Yeah. We just have to see how far it will go. Absolutely. So my last question would be, what advice can you give to an up and coming music producer or someone that wants to be a mixing engineer? All right. Uh, my very best advice to up and coming mixing uh, producers and engineers are, they have to apply patience because this whole business is not an overnight success syndrome business you know you need to learn the tips you need to learn the tricks you need to be patient enough to you know understand the front and back of the business you know for example a lot of people don't even know that when they do some jobs they should be placed on royalties a lot of engineers don't know that so these things are what they need to do to hone their skills up patience is a virtue they should learn and learn to the end of it let them not depend on the ais to get quick jobs done you know you know we spent a lot of times tweaking knobs here and there knowing what the sound is all about trying to figure out why this is a high frequency why should you why should you should place the high frequencies on you know six and start tuning the cues here and there all involved a lot of patience and we applied it. So my advice to them is to stick to their games, be patient enough to learn the in and outs of engineering and audio technology, because it's very important. Then the sky will be their beginning. Absolutely. There you go, guys. Thanks, Young Rock, for the you know insight. Thank you so much for having me.